we're going to be looking at how do you uh, we're going to be rotating birds around and looking at the three quarter view of the tummy in the back. And I've got some stuff specific about specific, specifically about this. And I think you're going to find that it is um, that it's going to really help you be able to draw birds from these different angles. So of all the things we can look at at birds, we're only really today looking at the body of the bird and we're thinking about how do we um, how we view it from the the front side and the back side, but not straight on, but in a this is called a three quarter view angle where you sort of see a little bit of this side, a little bit of this side, but mostly pointing this way, not straight towards you, not a full on profile, right? Oh, and I need one more drawing aid from my cabinet over here, um, and also ah. Jeff. We have a question here too about rendering bird heads and bodies when the head and the body are turned in different directions. So I'm guessing like where the body's this way, but the bird may be like looking at a different direction than the body. This this will tie into this. And that, that's right. So that was actually the, the thing that originally got me, got me excited and started was I was thinking about like head and body. Um, and, I, and, and, and basically you can think of the head rotating and the body rotating relatively independently. The bird heads, they were on this long, very flexible neck. And um, as they spin their head around, the body will keep its basic position. And as you move that head around, um, there's, there's not too much distortion. So you can think of the head and the body as separate little units. And, um, Today, what we're going to do is we're going to really take a close look at drawing that body from these three quarter view angles. Um, the head as actually this is best done with a picture since we're talking about drawing. And it's best done with my orange. All right, so I have an orange here and I'm going to draw on my orange. This is the equator of the orange, right? Um, so, you know, the, as you know, the orange spins on its axis and there's our, 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 whoops, our orange equator, right? So um, as I um, take my orange or any sphere and I rotate it, you get this cool kind of crescent moon effect. So notice how this side over here, there is, you're looking at a little crescent moon over here. You're looking at a little crescent moon. Oh, which reminds me, how do you draw crescent moons? Because um, a lot of, I see a lot of illustrations, it's wrong. So this, I'm gonna have a slight digression from my digression into drawing the crescent moon. And then um, we'll be back. So let's take a look at this. The crescent moon, or if you're drawing any um, sphere with a line going across it. What you want to do is imagine the poles. So if from this pole here whoop, down to this pole here, as you get crescent moons, um, the lines always start and end right here at the poles. So if I draw a little curve like this here, that's either you know, either a shadow or the crescent shape. As that progresses across the face of the moon, it's gonna to go to here and then to there. So that means when I'm drawing my moon in the sky, I can see this sort of a shape, But I'm not going to take a look at this. Here's the, here's the mistake that people make. If this is my pole, boop, boop, what people will do is they will start and end past that pole. And the moon never does that. It's always a line going from pole to pole. And the same is true as I'm rotating this around. I can't turn this at any angle that is going to make this point where this comes in up here 
um, wrap further around here so you see that. Um, how does this relate to drawing birds? Well, I can roughly think of the body of my bird and the head of my bird as these two little units that, that stick together. Um, so if I've got sort of a body egg, I can have my head sitting on top of that. And the, um, this head is going to, can turn independent of this body. So if the body is in a total profile, the head can be looking straight towards me. Or the head can be turned this way, all right? Or this way. Ooh, you see the moon in the bird head? Uh-huh. See, that's where my little bird beak is going to come in. So what I want to do is to think of bird heads and bodies as, as, as oranges with a Sharpie marker line across them. So it's got a central meridian, right? It goes right down the middle of the face of the bird and right down the middle of the belly. So if I'm, imagine this now not the head, but imagine this is the belly. As the bird turns side to side, right? That belly line is gonna turn. So if it's in a total profile, the belly line is this edge of the bird here. But if it's turned towards me a little bit, the belly line is going to be coming down there. So think of this as the bird's zipper, the zipper on the bird suit. And on any bird that is turned towards me, the location of the zipper on the bird suit is going to be really, really important. So I can take a body, this one I'm going to look at it from the back. Um, here is a body oval and we're looking, here's a little line kind of coming up over its back and it's going to have a head attaching onto here and the head is going to be looking away from me here. So I can have a bird with the back of its back turned towards me and then here's the back of the head. So this is a zipper line up the middle of the back or down the middle of that zipper actually goes all the way around the body, right? Um, that and that line that comes up the middle of the head, you wanna think of that then continuing around the back of the bird's head. Let's just do one more of these. Um, I am going to turn this towards me here. And I'm going to have a bird head and I'm going to have it looking over this way. So it's going to, its head is looking this way. And the belly is coming towards me. Right where those crosshairs hit, that's where the beak attaches. And here's the sides of the bird's breast coming down here. It's going to have some wings and other bits kind of tucked back up in there. And we'll be looking at kind of how to handle those parts that are kind of foreshortened and, and wrapping around the far side of the bird in just a moment. So I've got some slides dialed up for that. But you can want to just sort of think of this head in the direction it points as it's a separate decision from this belly. So if you have them lined up, the bird may look a little bit more mechanical. So just 
by putting the head at a slightly different direction than your body, your bird just feels a little bit more like, ooh, looking around, kind of looking around. Ooh, is it having a lot of fun, right? And that's, that's really cool. So now, well, I'm going to check which microphone I'm on. Okay, good. I'm on the right microphone. I am going to share. Hold on a moment. I'm going to try to do this um, this new system where I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to try to show you my uh, the camera view and my share screen at the same time, and we will hope that this works. Hold on, just a moment. So I'm going to try to share. Uh, here we go. Share desktop. Um, Devea, are you looking at a big desktop screen right now? I'm looking at a presentation that says a new angle on birds. And, and um, because I have a split screen, I can also still see your paper with, with your sketches. <laughs> so you can see this, all this other stuff now. This just may work. All right. And now you're also seeing the visualizer with the screen, right? Yes. Okay. Um, at some point, I'm going to get really advanced on all of you and um, be able to um, have this. Um, oh, let me see. View <coughs> slide only. Ah, oh, look at that. It's going a little off. Um, okay, I just got too clever for myself. I thought that I could, um, thought I could do something really cool, but I can't. Anyway, um, so let's check this out. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at this bird from the underside. Did he draw in this? Oh, no, I didn't. Um, so what I am going to do here is I'm going to get my little annotation tools. Um, and what I've got now all my screens going black on me. Oh, there it is. All right, this may, just may work. Here we go. Take a look at this annotation. Um, here is this little Wilson's warbler, right? And when I look at the Wilson's warbler, I want to think of, I want to think of my, um, the sort of the center line of my bird's belly kind of coming up here. So here's, here's its body. And there is its little birdie center line. Oh, um, wing on the far side. Um, hold on a second. I think I need to switch. Am I correct? I need to switch microphone. Um, I was just saying that um, Anne was saying that if you press uh, play in Keynote, it might help with the screen thing a little bit more. Hit play with in, in, in Keynote, unfortunately, what it seems to do is to, it'll, it'll dominate the whole screen and you won't oh. be able to see the little side. Okay, sorry. So I'm just gonna kind of go uh, in this view. So what I want to do here is to, 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 to draw in that little center line on the bird's tummy. That's gonna help me kind of get the features on either side symmetrical to that. The, Clear these drawings. So on a plain belly, actually, I think that this bird's your legs are here. Its center line is probably much closer right to there. Yep, that's better. So its center line is about in here. 
And uh, yes, sorry. So you're putting in that little kind of half moon shape. Oops. Um, the uh, um, notice that you. I'm having a hard time clearing. Papa, click eraser. Yeah. Click eraser. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so the uh, what? I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. So that was the little crescent moon in the belly of that bird. And now let's take a look at. <laughs> so all my great plans of, of having this be smooth for you folks have, are slowly melting before my, my right now here. No worries. We know, we know how technology goes. <laughs> Not a worry. Um, somebody had suggested hitting the format. There we button. go. Oh, never mind. Um, all right. So let's take a look at this new bird right here. Um, I also want to check in. Um, Ivea, are you still seeing the... Yes. All right. Um, now... Uh, zoom. I am going to annotate this again. Um, so for this one, this bird's belly, its center line is coming right here. So if you look, here's the ball of its body, and here's its center line. We have the dark coming up this side and curling down this side you know that this bird is symmetrical. So if you're looking at it straight from the front, you'd be seeing this V being symmetrical. But because it is rotated off to the side, this far side, it's wrapping around the edge of the bird. And that gives you this asymmetrical, this asymmetrical mark of this belly. Let's take a look at what the wing is doing here. The entire wing is, composed, is now being compressed into this tiny little area right back here. And um, we're really not seeing very much of it. Most, mostly what you see is median coverts, greater coverts, and then there's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit this part right here that's a little bit of the secondaries that you see kind of sticking out there. And that's all you see of the wing. So the wing rocking away from you, start to expect the wings to really have altered, changed shapes. So, whoops, um, we're going to be paying a lot of attention to um, how, those, how those change. Let me take a look at another Uh, clear, clear old drawings. Let's take a look at another bird here in three quarter view. And what I'd like you to do is just draw in a little oval at the angle of this bird's body. And uh, let's see, annotate. Here. Draw in where you think the center line is. I'm seeing this bird's center line as just about here. And do you remember on that other warbler how the lines came up and then they hooked back at a slightly different angle? 
the patterns on the chest of this bird are going to be doing exactly that same thing. So notice that on the far side, we have lines that are roughly doing this. And on this side, we have our lines doing this. This uh, center line is going to be very helpful if there are patterns on the chest of our bird. We're going to be able to make them symmetrically on either side. I'm now I'm going to jump over to this little camera on the side here. And so if I'm drawing a bird and it's got patterns on its chest, I'm going to be expecting this sort of asymmetrical hockey stick kind of a mark. So that means that if there are stripes and spots going on in here, and let's make this sort of song sparrow style. We'll put a central dot here so you kind of know where you're, even though this has a warbler bell. Um, on this side, these little lines are going to be just doing this, just kind of disappearing around the edge there. So that's going to help me sort of think about this side as being different from this side. On a bird with a, you know, look at this one, it's got, instead of this pattern going up, there's sort of a pattern going down. So let's draw in your oval for this bird, draw in the center line, and let's think about what is going to happen on the pattern on the head of this bird and the breast of this bird. So if this is my oval, And this is my center line. Let's try that again. And this is my center line. The center line is going to go right down the middle of that mark on the tummy. And let's think about um, let's think about this this body here in terms of of of, an, of, of sort of um, sort of sort of latitude line down to glow. To glow. If I were putting latitude lines around a globe here, they would be hooking in something like this. This is the line that's pointing straight towards you. As you get closer here towards the side, things are hooking more, hooking more, hooking more around the side and coming straight down right in here. So notice that this, that the line of sort of wrapping around this body that is coming, the one that is projecting straight towards you is not in the middle of the breast of the bird because the bird is turned over toward, is pointing to the right. If this bird were instead pointing straight towards us, yes, this center line would be that sort of midline of the chest. But this, this line that is pointing, the one that would be, the one that is projecting towards us is not the center line of that tummy. So that means that lines that are wrapping around here on either side of that center line, right? They're going to be kind of symmetrical around there. But as they kind of wrap around here, they're going to tuck in. And as they wrap around here, these lines tuck up and in. The implications for that, for this, what you see in the pattern, are huge. So notice that over here, I am going flatter. Over here, this line is more tucky. Let me change um, colors in here. So right here, as I cross this center meridian, right, it is flatter across there. And as it comes in here to the side, it's tucking up and in there. What are the implications for this on how I draw this bird? Well, if this is my center line of my tummy, here, this area is flat. Over here, this area is hooking up. 
Over here, this angle is flatter. Over here on this side, this is tucking up more. You see what's going on? Because this bird is not pointing, to pointing towards you, the, all the stuff on this side of the bird is hooking up at a steeper angle. And so on either side of this symmetrical spot on its belly, you're not seeing symmetrical marks. You're seeing it go flat across here and tuck up for the contour of the head. What we have a tendency to do, what we have a tendency to do is if this is my, 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 my head of the bird and my body of the bird, people would tend to make that, whatever line separates the black from the white, sort of the same, kind of straight across. But it's gonna curve across and as it gets to this side, that's where it hooks up more. So off my center line, I'm going to come down and hook up and I'm going to have this little spur follow also that center line. <clears throat> Notice here on the wings, right here is all this is telling me, on the wings, I have a small wedge of wings and it's hard, you know, I can see because I've got white lines in here that that's where my um, median and greater wing coverts are. And if I know that these are, this is a bird with wing bars, then those will be the edges of those. But you notice it's, it's hard to really tell the details of what's going on on this wing because it's just wrapping around away from us and it's hard to see details there. So drawing in all these sort of feather, 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 back here is going to take a whole bunch of detail, put it in that part of your picture. That will then visually pull this section of the drawing forward where that wing is. And instead of having that wing recede back behind the edge of the animal, it's going to really pop out. So um, on these three quarter view animals, I'm going to be on the parts that are further away from me, I'm also going to be putting in less detail on that wing. That wing. Let's take a look at this female gross beak here. Isn't that a lovely beak? Um, and she's going to reinforce some of these ideas. You can see a little suture coming up here that helps us sort of see the middle of this bird's chest. You can think of the head as rotating back and forth on this axis here. Um, sort of independently of what the chest is doing. And remember from that warbler we saw earlier on, hold on a second, the warbler we saw earlier on, you talking about me? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Remember that hockey stick pattern where we come up? Oh, that hockey stick pattern <clears throat> um, where we come up and then we tuck down at a different angle. Right, that is what we're also seeing here on this gross beak. So we are seeing lines that come up this way and then tucking down at a different angle. So finding that center line on the tummy, very, very important. And patterns will either tuck this way into it or they will tuck this way into it. So either the hockey stick comes down this way or the hockey stick comes up this way. Either side, there's more of flatter here and a steeper tuck coming in on the far side. One last three-quarter view from the front. All right. No big patterns here, but 
You're going to see if we put that center line in, this bird makes a lot more sense. So drawing the oval for the body. Here is your center line. And look at this. We're coming up here and then tucking down steeply. There's that hockey stick again. Probably wouldn't hurt just to mention that I generally think of bird chests as uh, about three sections. There is from the bottom of the head, there is a section up here, the upper breast. Then there are flanks on this side. There's the flanks on the other side. Uh, I'm sorry, flanks here and flanks on the other side, on either side of that suture. So that suture that comes up the middle, which I'll now put in in a different color, stops at about here. In the upper part of the chest, there's a zone of feathers that goes all the way across. So you'll often see a little separate bump up here and then these lower parts sort of flapping out. Let's see if uh, I go back a couple of drawings. Yeah. Oops, hey, please stop doing that. Let me try this again. This upper part here has smaller, tighter feathers. Patterns are often very crisp up in that area. And then on either side, on these flanks areas, um, you can think of those as two separate, big, looser pads. These will be fluffier feathers, and the patterns in them will not be quite as crisp. But it's one zone that goes all the way across. And then our lower chest is going to be divided If you get a bird in your hand and you blow on its tummy, you'll actually find bare skin going right up the middle. There's a big pad of feathers on this side and a big pad of feathers on this side. And the, um, the birds do a comb over, over that bare spot. And then there's the three quarter back view. The three quarter back view, um, this bird is going to help. By the way, all the pictures that you're seeing um, were taken off of the uh, website birdpixel.com by Vet Kenzodi. Um, I really want to encourage people to go check that out. Wonderfully curated uh, collection of photographs of birds and um, you'll find it really useful for your sketching. So um, when we're drawing the back of the bird, remember on the, the, the front of the bird, the direction that the hockey sticks go was really, really important. But on the back, there's a few different things that we want to really pay attention to. So thing one on the back is the center line of the back. You may have already figured that out. It's still going to be really, really important for me just kind of having a landmark to find my way across the back of the bird. Um, so on this bird here, here is the back, sort of the line of the middle of the back. Coming down here, and then across these two markers. Unless the bird is really contorting its body, um, the two wings on its back will line up symmetrically. And at a relaxed position, the tail is also lined up with those same features. So take a look at this. Right. I am going to draw a line from wingtip to wingtip here. 
and it's a parallel line here on the bottom, the bottom of the secondary case, and a parallel line on the top of the uh, of the wings here. So these features line up, and if it's in a relaxed position, very often the tip of the tail is at exactly the same angle. Isn't that cool? So what this allows me to do is as I'm drawing in, if I put in these what are called parallel guides, then when I'm drawing in, say the wing on one side, here are my secondary feathers, here are my secondary feathers on the other side, they end up in parallel, parallel blocks. Here's my wing coming down here and I know where to stop to have a symmetrical wing. The tail can be cocked at a different angle, but very often you'll find in a relaxed position, this is what you see. So these parallel guides are just gold for doing that. What we're going to see is that as this bird turns more and more away from us, so it goes from having its back straight to us to what we see here with this at a slight angle, to even more where the line of the back is going to be closer to that line of the bird. In a full profile, it'll be like this, where the line down the middle of the back is the edge of the bird. Right? As we go from this one to two to three to four, our view of that far wing is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And where we see this wing coming in is going to get higher and higher and higher. So that means that this far wing is going to get reduced to disappear. It's going to wrap around the far side of the bird. And where you see the wing starting is going to move across the bird like that on this close wing. So we're going to see this point here where the wing begins also tracking up in that direction. Center line. Let's take a look at how this might look. <clears throat> so notice a few things about it. First, notice what you think I'm gonna say. You're right, okay? What am I about to point out on this bird? And look at how those things line up. As this bird has rotated, we've had several things go on. We have the point of the wing has moved from down here at the edge to up in here. So we're moving across the line of the body this way as that bird rotates more. If we turned it even more, it'd be higher. Here's that center line down the middle of the back. And notice as you go down that back that we can actually see the back between the two wings. This just depends on how the bird is choosing to hold its wings. Sometimes it covers that zone up in there. Sometimes you see back feathers going all the way down there. So we've got our, um, our, our back feathers up in here. We have our rump feathers down below that. And we have our upper tail coverts, these gray feathers right here. Let's take a look at those parallel guides. Wing tips, back of the secondaries, where the wing starts. Look at how the tertial feathers line up too. Isn't that cool? And the wing is tail tip is roughly going in the same direction. So when you're drawing the back of the bird, these parallel guides will really, really help. And they don't cross. If you're looking straight, if you're looking at the, the, the bird at it and its back view, you're looking straight at its back, you will see those cross, those parallel guides cross at right angles to that line of the back. But when you're looking at a three quarter view angle, those are going to be at 
an angle, depending on the angle that the bird, whether it's pointing towards you or away from you a little bit, you will see those not necessarily as being parallel. It's just going to depend whether you are looking more sort of side on on the bird or looking down on it a little bit or kind of looking up on it a little bit, you'll see those parallel guides cross it at a different angle. So just connect the wingtips to see if the secondaries line up with that and then you'll get your angle. Let's take a look at one of the hardest things to do is to envision and let yourself put in that wing on the far side of the body. Let's just take a moment and look at what it's actually doing. So we're seeing the secondaries and the primaries. The secondaries, we're seeing the one, two, three of the tersals right there, All right? So here is our, here's our secondaries. We've got one, two, three. And then over here, of course, that's one, two, three. And then there's a whole pile of the same length. That whole pile of the same length, you can see some of the edges of them in there, but they're all kind of lining up and we don't see any of those other feathers. So along the back of the bird, there's sort of a drop shape. And we've got a series of tertial feathers sticking out. Then there's a little bit of a step down here and we're getting to the plane of the, the primary feathers sticking down below that. People are scared of drawing this back wing. So very often you'll see, you'll see people leave it out in all the drawings. Even when they've got a three quarter view here, people will leave this out. If you are putting it in, just remember, you're gonna keep those parallel guides on there. Then that wing here on the far side will relate and make sense with the wing that's on the close side too. Notice, how you see again this space between those wings, that gap here, that's not always the case. Check out that birdie. And see if you can figure out what's going on here, because this is kind of weird. Let's put in a few landmarks. I'm going to come down the middle of the back. Maybe some parallel guides will help us. Let's put in some of those. Let's go to over here. Tails lined up at that same angle. But what's going on here? What makes this wing business confusing? What's happening is that the wing on the far side is overlapping the wing that is closer to you. So you've got your one, two, three, whole pile the same lengths. On the other side, tucking underneath that, you have one going to the same height here two, that feather going to here, three, that third feather going to the same height here, and its whole pile the same length right in there. So the far wing is overlapping on top of the one that you're looking at. This is really, birds do this a lot. They'll take their, their, their wings will fold up over their back making a small little kind of wedge right on the top here between the primaries and the base of the secondaries. But you don't always see that, that, that kind of daylight of the, the back of the bird going down between them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So if I get over here to draw this, let's go over here, here and I am going to give myself a bird, and here's the back of its head. Here is its 
the line of its back coming down. And um, I, its wing is going to start somewhere in here and it's going to come here. So it'll have secondaries, it'll have primaries. And let's see what the other wing on the other side is going to do. So I'm going to have a line here, a line here, a line here. So there are my parallel guides. I'm going to have a line here for the base of my tail. That means that on, let's make this far wing overlap. So I'm going to have my one, two, three feathers coming down my wing. Um, is going to come down to this point here. And on this close side, I'm going to be tucking in underneath that wing. But that far wing can overlap me, or I'm now going to erase those overlapping feathers. And I'm going to put the feathers of the wing that's on the closest side to us as being the ones that are on top. And these other feathers here are tucking in underneath that. Oh, look at that. Here's actually, I want this. I'm going to tilt this at a slightly different angle. There we go. That's better. And then down here are going to be my upper tail coverts. My tail is going to come down here. Let's say there's a little notch in the tail. Allows me to get my tail tip symmetrical with the rest of my bird. I'm not going to put a lot of detail in on this far side of the wing. If I do, it's going to pull that part of the wing really forward visually and it's going to flatten out this area here. Right now, because I've got this detail here, one, two, three, and all these little lines, that other stuff there is dropping back. Um, I was wondering if you could move your drawing a little bit more to the, oh, yeah, there we go. Thank you for giving me track of that. I get looking down at my piece of paper and lose where I am on the screen. Now let's take a look at another bird. Take a look at this one too. Take a look, especially at that far wing. Because we're rotating here, um, we have this point of the wing here, really pretty close to that breast. If we were looking at this bird from a full on side, you would, um, you'd have a rather different pattern. Um, that wing would appear to come start higher on the body. But because we're rotated around, we're seeing it, there's not very much space here. Actually, this little birdie here can help me do that. So notice when you see the back of the bird here, where this point here comes in, is right there, we're seeing more of the back of the bird. As I rotate the bird, that point 
is rising higher on the chest until you've got the side view of the bird. So as we've got more of the three quarter view back bird, expect that wing to connect closer to the front of the bird. Take a look at your tercels here. One, two, three on the back side. And then here are the primaries coming down. You're just sort of seeing the ends of those. And on this side, um, hold on. on this side, notice how this tertial is coming into the same point as this one. This one here, that's where this one is coming in. And this one here, that did the full length, one, two, three, right there. Let's just take a moment and draw this bird. Draw and diagram this bird. Don't get lost in all the feathers up here. But <clears throat> see if you can sort of map this in as a three-quarter view. Um, again, you've got your center line, your parallel guides. You're starting your wing close to the front of the body here, right there at that edge. Let's do this together. Where do I start my wing? I'm going to start my wing somewhere off in this area. Where do I end my wing? My wing's going to end up over there. Move my secondaries down lower here.
give yourself the bird will be around for about half a minute more. Again, we don't need to finish this drawing, but we want to see if we can block in sort of what we're seeing there in that, that back view. This is your first, by the way. You might find yourself sort of jumping in in the middle of this bigger conversation. People are we're talking about tertial feathers and secondaries and primary feathers. Um, we've had a bunch of other classes about aspects of bird anatomy, anatomy um, and we're referencing that. There will be other classes um, that have been, there are ones that have already been recorded where we go into those basics really step by step. And then there are, uh, there also will be other future ones where we return to those details of that anatomy. Um, but here I am sort of starting with some assumptions of prior knowledge. So if this is your first class, this, and that feels kind of overwhelming, I apologize to you uh, about that. Um, but I'm here, I'm really trying to uh, you know, get in a few kind of key points that I think will really help people with their, with their brains. So for this little birdie here, <clears throat> take a look at that far wing. It's overlapping the one on your side. But all we see is just that little lip of the tertials from the far side coming over and flipping over the edge of the wing. If there was just a hint of that structure in your, in your drawing, you'd really be demonstrating a very high level of understanding and expertise in this bird shape. Notice here also how high the leading edge of the wing starts. So what is, when I'm, when I'm trying to map in where my wing goes, um, I first find this point right here. And then I find this point right here. And I draw a line between them. Um, so we remember in our earlier drawings when the bird is rotated away from us more, this, this point here was way over here. Now look at how far it is moved in this direction and how little of the far wing we see. One, two, three feathers. And that's it. And then our close wing is just tucking up underneath that. So here we've almost turned ourselves all the way flat, almost a full profile. Just this little hint of those feathers peeking around the other side. It's just we're like we're just slightly not doing our, our our profile here, right? Similarly, when you on your 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 beak, when instead of having your beak just come so just having your your beak straight out like this, if you kind of suggested like here's the center line of my beak and my head. Uh, actually kind of tucks in past that. Just slightly turns this um, instead of a full side view. It suggests that you're, you're looking at this slightly kind of turned towards you. So a few just subtle turns right there, and it makes a big difference. So today, we've looked at the belly of the bird, and with a little bit of wing peeking around it, we've looked at the back of the bird, and rotated that. And this gives us a better sense of how to turn a bird in space. 
when people start drawing birds, we tend to just lead with people, people want to draw the bird. Here's the profile of the bird. And then no matter what position the bird is in, we draw the profile of the bird. What I'm suggesting to you today is that you can rock and rotate this bird to all sorts of different angles. If you're just, if you just have the profile, then there's only two positions in the 360 degrees that the bird be, can be turning that you actually can draw accurately. And most of the time, you're going to be seeing a bird at a three-quarter view angle. So what my suggestion is, your homework for today, is to take, uh, go on to either uh, birdpixel.com. I also recommend seeingbirds.com. Um, and choose some photographs where the bird is at a three-quarter view position. And if you want to, you can also have the head pointing a different direction than the body. Block those in. You do not need to finish any of these drawings. They don't need to be finished portraits of the birds. What we want to do is to block in the essential features and then draw in kind of spend some time playing with a few kind of target areas where there are details that really kind of turn the corner, kind of are going to really be important for, for showing that little angle. You don't need to finish, you don't, don't need to worry about noodling in the whole bird. So just let's do five. Let's do five birds at three-quarter view position. The wire frame of this bird, so basically the gesture sketch that supports the, the, the details of the drawing, and then a couple little spots on that where you're going to play with some details that are going to give you those essential forms. And you're going to find that you're then in the field able to, oh, I'm seeing a bird, and it's at some interesting angle. Those interesting angles will come off the tip of your pencil much, much, much more easily. Have some fun with this. Let's not get wrapped around the axle about having to make a perfect picture. What we're going to do is all of these are studies. And what they're, they're all practice for the drawings that come after that. So don't worry about having to make it look good. The more you do, the better it's going to get. I have a hunch that Ray Bonto out there is going to fill several pages with these. Maybe he already has in the time that it took us to do this workshop. And um, so I'm going to encourage you folks to um, journal like Ray Bonto this week. That's your challenge. Play with that idea, experiment with it, and make it yours. And you're going to find by the end of this week, those three-quarter view, uh, views of the birds are going to be as natural to you as a side profile. Have some fun with it. And thank you so much for being here. Let's now jump over to our community cam. If you don't want to, uh, your picture to be shared, then just turn off your camera at this moment. Um, but if you can't keep it on, that's fun because <laughs> I miss seeing everybody's faces. And um, then we get to, to, to wave at each other. And um, if you've, there's a journal page that you want to share, I'm gonna encourage you to hold that journal up to the screen and we will uh, bump over to you. Um, because I, I uh, mentioned you earlier, I'm going to start with uh, Ray Bonto, then um, Ayoka, I see Valters also has a journal out, and let's, uh, so uh, we'll start here. We're going to first figure out how to allow you to unmute yourselves, allow you to, there you go. Um, and, hey, Ray Bonto, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so I was crazy sketching them rather than diagramming them because, you know, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, I want, so everybody notice those those contour lines wrapping around the the body of that gross beak, uh, rose breast beak, gross beak in the upper right hand corner. So what we're really seeing there is thinking three dimensionally, thinking three dimensionally, not being. Um, not seeing these as flat shapes on the paper, but you're seeing these as a three-dimensional form that in your brain pops out of the paper. That's really important. Great. What else is going on here? Yeah. I also, yeah, these are the other 
words. I I forgot to diagram them um, when I got that's, scared. That's, that's great. That's great. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Way to go. Um, the uh, this is really exciting to see. So um, what I'm so that when I'm saying to you folks, this is this is this is throwing down the gauntlet to all everybody watching this video. What I'm going to do is challenge you folks to fill pages fearlessly, and um, and don't don't be afraid of going through paper. Um, you know the um, you've you've got a, a separate journal that you use for for practices and studies, right? I've got um, these are all the classes and my own sketches and all the practice stuff. Hey, th uh, that's the practice book, and I've got a separate nature journal in my bag. All right. So he's got a, a big he's got a big practice book, and um, how okay. many practice books have you gone through during the pan pandemic? Four. Four. Um, I'm not to the uh, um on so far. Four so far. Oh. All right. So what we're seeing here again, friends, we're talking pencil miles. We're talking pencil miles here. Give yourself permission to do this. That's really exciting to see. Yeah, I also decided to sketch an eagle out in soft eight uh, B lead. Uh, and eight B is very soft, uh, so I got the dark values. Oh yes, and you get those 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 smooth values. Something that's really fun when you um, are working with a pencil that's this soft is you can also then even draw on it with a fine point eraser. And um, it allows you to draw white lines and, and highlight into uh, a drawing that is, has got these sort of dark forms. That's one, that's one to see. I am very excited. To see. I love how you're really pushing in those values. Yeah. Um, and something looks wrong about this. Present. Um, know how to mute this purple um, a bit? Uh, yeah. Um, you had a bit of yellow, but I had trouble doing that because of the spots. Yes, I absolutely. I have exact. We have exactly the same problem. Um, you uh, point out that the on the back of the pheasant there are so many little patterns and small little details. Um, that it gets overwhelming and it's easy to get lost in the middle of that. Um, the something that I want to point out that is just jumping off this page to me is the iridescence on the neck of this bird is this is uh, th that is you're showing a really a sort of a new level of mastery with that. You're really pushing those darks. But then there's that little sparkle of, of, of purples, blues, and greens that comes through. I can see a little bit of the, the hint of those feather edges. And that high contrast, that dark next to those, those bright colors that are sort of disappearing in there, really um, reads as iridescence. That's exciting to see. Yeah, I used colored pencil. Um... Um, I oh, um, on Saturday was uh, my parents' anniversary. Please, so they ought to have anniversary from all of us. Uh, yes, on Saturday. So I decided to make a gift. Um, it took two and a half hours, but I managed to draw the same eagle owl in colored pencil. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, that is something that they will treasure for years and years. That's really special. Your um, proportions on this, so solid. And I like the way that you handled the detail on this. Um, those uh, darks that you're putting in on the chest, um, I'm guessing that those came in, came in a few late in those, um, those, those other chips of color. Uh, yes, of course. Um... Colored pencil as usual, so I used a black prism color for this. Yeah. Oh, that is that's a family tre family treasure, right? Happy anniversary, an anniversary eagle owl. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. Uh, now, let's jump over to, um, let's see. Next was um, Ayoka, if I'm correct. And spotlight for everyone. Hey, it's good to have you with us. Hi. I'm learning so much. Sia is such a great teacher. I'm just very, very grateful. I'm learning to see. I'm, I'm learning to draw too, but I'm learning to see. I, I have my binoculars in the woods and I look at the birds and I kind of get where the feather groups are more. And it's, it's been a good journey. That's fantastic. It's, that's what it's really all about. It's not, the, whatever we put down on the piece of paper is um, in service of paying that kind of attention to the beauty of the, the, the bird, the flower, the moment that's in front of us. It was really, we had a, um, uh, another bout of winter or like the first real one here in Germany. Um, and I was looking at, so we had icy rains first and then we had snow, not lots Ooh. of snow, but it was really, really cold for a while. And I was looking at, um, at patterns like um, tracks in the snow and this was puzzling me at first. So I was thinking, was this a bird? What did this? And I found out recently that it probably was a blackbird, a blackbird taking flight. Oh, um, yeah, a snow pattern with that. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's so I got really cool. into looking at, at tracks and, and uh, looking, comparing dog uh, footprints and, and uh, foxes footprints. And it was really amazing. And then I drew I'm looking forward to you talking about snow and ice. So I drew a, um, a twig covered in ice. Everything was like, there was this, this strange sound because all everything was covered in ice. And as the trees were moving, it was really, you could hear that rustling sound that's really unusual because everything was kind of, I think the ice was cracking. It was like this little bit of ice. Oh, what a wonderful moment. So the trees are covered with ice, first real winds after the ice storm and you're getting, the trees are singing a new song. That yeah. is an incredible observation. And, and, and even also to, to describe the sounds, that is, that's so, that's, that's wonderful, wonderful that you're doing that. A lot of people just get into the visual and we skip this incredible world of information that's coming in through our ears. Well, this is really fun. Yeah, it was amazing because because uh, it was such an intense moment because it was so cold and uh, my hands were freezing while I was doing this and then I heard the sound and and then I had this kind of tiny little poem and I and I was I'm listening at the moment I'm listening to your recording um, about haikus so I kind of that kind of part haiku came to me right then and there and that was really interesting because it was a, such a strong sensory moment so yeah oh that's beautiful. Um, yes, for, for people who missed it, uh, in the educator forum, uh, we had Beth Gologli on who walked with us through a process of creating haiku in our nature journal. That video is up and online right now. Um, so if you uh, missed that, um, that uh, it's really a fun workshop. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that and for sharing that experience of being out there um, after that first freeze. That's really fun. Um, and um, Walters, it's really good to see you again. Making you stay up late there. Yeah, it's really late here. Oh. Uh, so I was out again looking at some ducks because that's unfortunately everything I have here in winter. Uh, but it is still very fun and I was going in an early morning uh, to the harbor wall we have by the seaside and there was a common buzzard. So it was my first time sketching a raptor ever. So it was very, very exciting to see. And it was, it was such a strange place for it. I never have seen a raptor uh, sitting before on that place. I have seen many ospreys. Uh, we have, I have, I live uh, pretty close to the sea, so sometimes we can see the ospreys like circling around by the shoreline, but never have I seen before. He was just checking out the gulls and it was very, very interesting. 
This is really cool. And your, your sketches here really capture the proportions of raptors. I can tell that this is, this is it, it just, your sketch has such a solid beauty of feel to it. That's really exciting to see. And uh, is also tone paper fun on something like this when there are those spots of white and you get to drop that in? That's just like, oh, 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 game on with my tone paper. Yeah, I was just, I, w I remember that it had like the uh, white, uh, a bit the white breast, but I didn't, uh, I, because I was sketching so quickly and then later on here, I had, had some more sketches of it, it came back uh, and I was just sketching so fast, but I remembered that it had the white and I was putting the details in this and I was just like, ah, whatever. And here, 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 white here, everywhere we go white. <laughs> it's so yeah, much fun. fun, it's so much fun. And yeah. we get to put the, uh, um, uh, the white in on those little eyeballs too, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, but the one thing I had problem with, uh, I'm I still don't know how to add, add the white highlights with a white pencil because I was being able I was able to see the paler edges of the feathers very clearly, but somehow it 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 turned out okay, but it yeah. isn't as good as I you, you want like it to it be more maybe, contrast, It's probably right? just practice. Well, it's the uh, so I've got a couple of suggestions and strategies for that. Um, one is you want to make sure that the paper is bone dry from the watercolor before you get in there with any colored pencil. Otherwise, the what the even slightly damp paper it will just mush and push out of the way out of your of your pencil and not be a rough surface for your pencil to catch on. So the mm -hmm. the, the colored pencil loves super dry surface. So I uh, once I put on uh, the watercolor, I have to test it so it's really, really dry. Yeah, or yeah, or, or just you know, could come back, you know, just uh, instead of like you know, go on, make some written notes, other sort of things, and then um, you know, you know, depending on how how um, uh, arid it is and how well, warm it is, I'm guessing you're uh, it's it's rather humid and it's cold where you are, so. The watercolor is going to take longer to dry, and um, but yeah, you want to wait till that is just solid dry, and then you'll have more success with putting that pencil on. And if that's not working for you, consider a little bit of gouache. So um, gouache is hold on. There we go. Um, gouache yeah, is a, um, it's a, it's an opaque white, um, I, I keep in my palette just sort of little, a uh, little pad of uh, gouache. This is um, a, a palette that I haven't used, but there you can see this is the kind of the, the gouache zone up here. And what I do is I take the tip of my brush, I dip it into that. It's going to start off too transparent because I have to kind of thicken it up. Then with a very little bit of water, I'll kind of wiggle my brush tip, wiggle my brush tip, wiggle my brush tip, and it turns it into a little bit of a thicker gouache paste, and I can then paint that on. Um, I want to get it kind of the consistency of a thick cream, and um, then I'll be able to, to, to paint with it. If it's watery, um, like tea, then it will, when I put it on my paper, it will look okay, and then when it dries, it'll turn super transparent. Apparent. So I'll get it to thicker, um, to a very kind of thick cream, and then okay. it will work. That's yeah. really fun to see. That is such a raptor shape. I also like that little sketch that you did where it kind of does the jump. The oh, arrow. yeah, this one. I was just, it was, uh, uh, that's this one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was kind of, I saw it at one moment, uh, it was sitting, looking around, and then just kind of jumped up and spread out its wings and disappeared behind like the wall. And then a bit later, these are the sketches when it came back. Nice. So, I mean, everybody just yeah. check out the arrow. You could just draw a little arrow curving over, but because of 
the shadow and turning it into a three-dimensional arrow, you get the sense that that arrow is going away from you. So isn't that cool that you can draw an arrow like that and it suggests directionality to it, not just up and down, but also away. Very cool. Very, very good graphic visualization. Uh, one other thing small I wanted to share. A few weeks ago, I uh, asked you if you had any tips on uh, how or some kind of ballpoints, ballpoint pens about uh, for cold weather. So I, at that time, I had ordered a, a, pen, a ballpoint pen that is, uh, has compressed air in it. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is the pen. And I gotta say, if anybody lives in a colder weather, so normal, normal ballpoint pens, they freeze up uh, when the temperatures get to zero. This one holds up till minus seven. So hmm. it the the ink gets a little bit like grayish and fades, like is a bit uh paler. It isn't that so black, but it still works. So it's a, a really nice tool for a colder weather. Oh, that's really cool. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. So uh thank you for sleuthing that out for us. And uh, yeah. being there in the, the, the negative temperatures, you are, 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 are perfect. The, fir the first person to test these things. Um, <laughs> and it, so you get a, uh, a you know, we, we talk about sort of experimenting with tools and then sharing that information. Um, you get a, a special badge for uh, extreme testing. <laughs> it was called, well, this sadly doesn't work when it gets minus, 10 so when it gets minus 10 i use i use something like that sometimes it gets even minus 20 so uh, but this one still works at those temperatures it's a uni pin fine liner and this is also a very cool tool sometimes i use it when i sketch with a ballpoint and then uh for maybe suggesting shadow, or I just want the lines to be blacker, I go over it with this, or I just sketch it. Sketch it. So this pen is pressure sensitive. The less you, uh, the less you press, the less kind of you will see it. But this one, if you want to uh, sketch at the beginning, and then when you feel confident with the lines, you just go over with them. This changes if you turn the angle more like this, it will be paler. And if you turn it more like this, it will get uh, blacker. So mm, it's also know. sometimes I sketch like that. I just put it and I quickly sketch the head, everything. And then when I feel confident, I turn it like that and it makes a nice black line. Is, is so that, is that is water that. soluble or is that um, when you hit it with water, does it? No, this is... Uh, this is water and pave proof pigment ink. It's not water soluble. So Great. it's good against the water. If you, you can put water, water color over it and it will work. So as you can see, if I, uh, these are some just sketches. If I can, I, if I turn it, it kind of, uh, you see a line that you can pretty much barely see. Yeah, so you yeah, can sketch yeah. with it at first, and then when you feel confident, it produces a nice black line. Oh, that, so it's the angle. That's yeah, really this, this, one, this one does it with angle. So if you turn it more like that, it will create kind of the lines will be more faded. And then you draw the body, for example, and then go like that. So this is a nice yeah. tool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see. Um, does anyone else have, have uh, journal items that they uh, wish to share? Um, 
Let's jump over to Ann Chadwick, Chadwick from Blue Conservation Science. Um, hey there. Hello. Hi, everybody. I love hearing from everybody else. I'm learning so much. Um, and this, some of you saw this if you were in Ideo's class last night, but um, these are my notes that uh, I'm using upcycled old file folders for tone paper. And uh, I was thinking, boy, then I can put in, put things in them with other notes from that and from Ivea's classes. But I recommend her class. It was so much fun. And we um, did some quick sketches from different um, parts of the family. And I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Ivea. Rose C, Rose C E, <laughs> the Rose family, which uh, includes some surprising bits of food. So um, I recommend her class. Um, and I think that's all I have for today. Thank you, and just I I just love everybody shares. Thanks. Uh, I think Jack, we're having trouble hearing your sound. Ah. Oh, there you are. There you are. Am I back? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, good, good, good. Um, so uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, so much fun to, 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 to look into everybody's journals and minds. I also like the way you found, um, uh, you, you found toned paper to work on on that file folder um our art supplies are where we find them and he's like i can where can i get some toned paper oh, there and that was that's really fun and then to see it turn into a work of 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 observation and attention is is wonderful that's that's a special file folder and thank you so much for sharing that <laughs> 